And so we were so excited for the influencer with a million and she posted it and we waited and we waited and we waited and we never got one single order. Hey, my name is Felix Tia, and I'm the host of Shopify Masters, a weekly podcast powered by Shopify, the easiest way to sell online, in person, and anywhere in between. Each week, we invite entrepreneurs like you to share what they've learned growing successful e-commerce businesses. In this week's episode, you'll learn how to encourage customers to share their photos, how to use YouTube to drive traffic to your store, and how to uncover Instagram influencers before they blow up. Today, I'm joined by Lisa and Lana Mushamel from Twinkle Tea. Twinkle Tea sells a range of unique nail products designed to bring the nail salon directly into your home and was started in 2013 based out of Los Angeles, California. Welcome, Lisa and Lana. Thanks, Billy. Really. Thank you for having us, Felix. Yeah, excited to have you both on. So tell us more about your most popular products. Ooh, the most popular products. Um, well, we sell a large range of nail stencils. It's... Um, you basically put them on your nails, you paint the polish off, you take them off and it reveals a, a really pretty design on your nails. And our, I think our nail stencils and definitely our holographic powder. Yeah. Uh, holographic is like a super crazy trend right now. So our holographic powder gives you this like really pretty rainbow shimmer design on your nails. Um, that's definitely one of our best sellers. Yeah. And then we've had, um, from the beginning, we've always had uh, nail brushes and other sort of uh, tools for cleaning up your nails and those sell pretty well also. Cool. Yeah. I'm nodding along. Like I know what you're talking about, but it only helps for them looking at the website to see exactly what you're saying. So yeah. How did you get into this? Uh, how did the both of you get into this, this business, this industry? Yeah. You know, uh, we were both unemployed and we had just left jobs. We hated and we were living with our parents. Uh, Lana was in college at the time. Yeah, I was pursuing a degree in a field that I didn't care about anymore. And I didn't want to just continue with the rest of my life with that. So Liz was actually following nail polish companies on Instagram. Yeah, I used to love... Um, I've always done my nails and I thought they were so pretty and creative. So I would follow all these different nail accounts on, yeah, on Instagram, like she said. And one day I just... Um, went up to Lana and I was think, telling her like, hey, what do you think about getting into this industry? So basically they were nail polish creators that from their own home, they create nail polish. So they have their own base, they go online, they buy a bunch of glitter and they create their own unique nail polishes. So Lisa was like, hey, let's do this. Um, she approached me because she knows I'm, I'm really creative yeah. and um, I love art and anything related to that. So she's like, let's do it together. It'd be like an awesome sister activity, you know? Um, if, if not just, if not a business, then it's a hobby we could do together. Now, what, what did you see about these companies on Instagram that made you recognize that, hey, this is something that, that there's opportunity or there's room for us to come in and, and do something? Yeah. So we started looking at the materials to purchase for our own nail polish. So uh, we found the base and then we went on Etsy and we started looking up glitter. And we realized there was only one company on Etsy selling glitter. It was completely monopolized. So we looked at each other and we were like, whoa, why don't we do this? Why don't we offer supplies to creators instead of creating um, nail polish, which honestly the market was already saturated with. Yeah. So we were like, well, let's do this and, you know, let's be more affordable and let's offer more options too. So that is where the idea of Twinkle Tea started. Uh, that's where the name Twinkle comes from, from the glitter, <laughs> from glitter. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we approached our parents. We asked for a $1,500 investment for glitter and um, it kind of just took off from there. Yeah. So our, our initial vision was to make the polishes and then it ended up turning into being more of a supplier. Mm, and so you were supplying the people that were creating and selling their own nail polish. Is that correct? Or how does this, how does the business model work? Yes. Yeah. That's how we started. Yes. And then from there, we branched off into being a nail art store for everyone. Yeah. So we started looking at other parts of nail art that were monopolized or could have uh, more options for people. Um, things that we could bring that would be more unique to the market. And um, that's kind of how we got into nail stencils. Uh, there were only six designs at the time from this other company. And we came in and within the first week, we released 40 designs. 
And we've naturally been able to build um, a product line since then. Got it. Now, so you you approach the the business as almost like a B two B setup, which is different than what I think most uh, store owners do. They they just sell directly to con- to the consumer uh, right off the bat. But you guys, right off the bat, were selling as a supplier to other vendors, other creators that were creating these policies. What was the? How did you approach them? How did you find these uh, these other essentially retailers or small businesses to sell to? Instagram. You know, in the beginning, we relied solely on Instagram and we would find the other, the nail polish creators as well as customers. Um, You know, we started noticing that everyone would follow us, like all people that would want to just put glitter on their nails, not in the actual polish. And that's when we kind of looked at each other and realized like, oh gosh, you know, there's a need for this stuff everywhere, not just in B2B, but to consumers as well. Yeah. So we went on right when we opened up right when we started and we instantly followed every single nail polish account that we could find every nail polish creator and we'd comment their pictures and we just kind of get our names out there you know Mm -hmm. give us an idea of this timeline then you you both you you looked at each other so let's start this business how quickly were you able to have an inventory walk us through like how quickly you were able to build some kind of inventory and then start reaching out to these initially at least these other uh, I guess uh, b2b customers yeah, I'd say we really only focused on the selling glitter to the companies probably only like a month. And then we branched out, we started selling to customers, and then we created a whole new product line. Gosh, Lana, I want to say maybe like four months from the very beginning of only selling glitter. And then we, it was, it was about a four month transition period into selling other products directly to consumers. Got it. And this is all done through Instagram. So you were finding these uh, profiles, these accounts that were initially at least selling their own polish, and you were you were following them, commenting on their pictures, and then they were following you back. And then how were they purchasing? Were they buying through Instagram, or were they going to your store, how did, or your website? How are they? How are they actually con- transacting with you? So at the time, we were only on Etsy, and I think as soon as our orders started. Like as soon as we started receiving at least two orders a day, we realized that it would be more inexpensive to open a Shopify account where I think we were paying $10 a month at the time, along with the credit card fees, as opposed to Etsy that was taking a quarter, literally 25 cents a sale, plus a renewal fee, plus their credit card fee. So um, I think it took us about six months to open our own Shopify store. Yeah. But yeah, initially we were just making sales off of Etsy. Got it. Now, what were you posting on, on Instagram? What, what kind of content were you producing to, to get these uh, people that are potential customers interested in checking out your Etsy store and then eventually your Shopify store? We would post um, pictures that we took of our glitter and our products. We would also send products out to Instagram influencers to post on their pages. Um, Most importantly, we were posting customers' manicures. So um, people could see actual people just like them, beginners in nail art that were creating manicures. And um, we started a hashtag. um, It was just hashtag Twinkle Tea. And we were able to get all our pictures through that hashtag. We would just refer to that every time we needed a new picture to post. And um, most importantly, too, we would write really long captions, really long personal captions. And we really tried to build a community on Instagram and make it feel like it was a family. Yeah, we would comment back everyone, respond to all messages. Mm-hmm. And we learned people's Instagram handles and we knew who we would talk to the most. And it was a very personal experience on our Instagram. Yeah. So mm. I think that that helped us a lot in the beginning. Yeah, so you were writing these long captions. Like, what was the purpose of that? Like, what, what what was the the goal of creating a you know lots of text essentially on your Instagram post? I think people just getting to know our personalities. Like the captions weren't you know technically about what we're selling, but more we would talk about yeah. us. Yeah, you know we would start a conversation within our comments, mm-hmm. and people started realizing like, oh, you know these are just like I think people really enjoyed the fact that we're two sisters. And we just have the small company and they would engage with us then when they realize like, oh, this is a small business. It's not a major corporation trying to sell to me. Hmm. And I like the approach of, of 
getting your customers content to, to post on your profile rather than, you know, creating it all by yourself. What were you doing to encourage this kind of, especially early on where you probably don't have that many customers yet? How are you able to start producing this kind of content to put on your Instagram? Um, well, first with every order that we would send, uh, we would write a handwritten note in the beginning. Um, we'd also really encourage people to use the hashtag. So, um, I think in the beginning, that's how we built our following. And also people enjoy getting the shout out, um, as our page was getting bigger, you know, people wanted to purchase our products to get that shout out to also in return, build their following. So I feel like that was a huge part in making our Instagram bigger. I mean, 99% of our posts are our own customers' images. I see. So you were, whenever you put up a picture of, of a customer's, uh, whenever a customer shares something on Instagram, you would repost and then link over to, to their profile. Yeah, we still do that. Yeah, course. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I like that because now you're giving them value, right? For for an exchange for for that for that content because these people do want to show off you know, what they can what they can do with the, with their nails. They want to show they want to show them using their your product and in exchange to get this this platform. You know, you, I'm looking at your Instagram now, over three hundred thousand followers, and that's like a, a big deal for 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 pretty much anybody that that has an Instagram that, to to get that kind of shout out. Now you you're you you emphasize that there is this kind of uh, personal touch that you try to create with the, with the community. Are you still kind of doing this this manual outreach in with with reaching out to influencers, reaching out to potential client or potential customers? Yeah, um, we rely a lot on social media, and actually, Lana and I do everything at the company. So. At this point, we're, we're a lot bigger. So unfortunately, the customers don't get the handwritten notes any longer, but we still do manage everything. So any comment that you see, like when we comment on any picture, it's Lana and I. A picture is posted, it's us doing it. Emails, we answer our own emails. Um, so everything is still personal. It's just that um, because it's on a bigger scale, we unfortunately don't have the time to make every single order um, as personal with the handwritten notes and stuff. But, um, but as for reaching out to influencers, yeah, yeah it's still definitely huge. Um, Liz and I, and, and I feel like this is really important for every new up and coming um, business that somebody wants to create. We realized really early on that micro influencers are such an awesome way to create potential customers. Yeah. I think people believe that you need to go big or go home and reach out to influencers with, you know, a million plus subscribers or a million plus followers on Instagram. But um, early on, actually, I think it was like our second year starting. Yeah. We decided to implement coupon codes specifically for each influencer. So let's say Lisa has an Instagram. I would give her the coupon code of Lisa for all her followers to receive 10% off of their orders. And we thought that way we can also see uh, which influencers are bringing in orders, right? By tracking their names. So um, so what we did was we reached out to 10 girls. And uh, one of them had as little as 30,000 followers. And our biggest one had a million followers. So we gave them each their own coupon code with their own handle. And within the same week, every influencer started posting her coupon code. And what we realized was our, our smallest influencer with 30,000 followers the day that she posted it, she received six orders with her code. And so we were so excited for the influencer with a million. And she posted it and we waited and we waited and we waited and we never got one single order from that yeah. influencer. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard this from multiple store owners that say the same thing where they, they say they focus on micro influencers. And it, what makes you, based on your experience, what do you think is the difference that allows someone that has a smaller following numbers wise perform better than someone that has a much larger following? So me personally, like I follow accounts that range in all sorts of um, followers, but like I'll follow an account that only has a thousand followers. And if I'm following an account that only has a thousand followers, it's because I care about what they have to say or what they're trying to sell me. It's because I value their opinion. So I personally am more likely to purchase from someone with a smaller account because I feel like they're being more genuine in what they're showing and what they're selling versus larger accounts that sometimes and not all the time because I follow many larger accounts that are very honest and will only um, recommend the best products. But basically, I feel like sometimes larger accounts tend to 
sometimes you don't know if something's you don't post. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's almost like by the nature of becoming a larger Instagram account, you kind of have to be a little bit watered down, right? You have to be not less less genuine, but you have to start being a little more flexible in in you know advertising and, and the kind of content you're putting out to attract a much larger audience. And by doing that, you water yourself down a bit. I think that that affects how genuine you look when you are promoting a product. I, I think I know exactly what you're saying. I've, I've seen this with, again, personal accounts versus like general topic accounts where because they're smaller, you are, there's a much more personal touch in the kind of relationship that you have with them by following them. So you're much more likely to trust them and the kind of products that they, they push out there. So was this, is, if someone that's starting today, you know, you guys have, again, over 300,000 followers. For someone that's starting from scratch today, can they take the same approach? Like, what, what, what's changed between the, the time that that the both of you started your your Instagram accounts versus like someone that would be starting today? When we first started, we relied solely on Instagram, and we were able to gain a lot of followers and a lot of sales through Instagram. Unfortunately, that's not the case any longer. Instagram has changed their algorithm, and although it's still a great tool, great social media tool, it's you can't rely solely on it any longer. Um, we have found that Facebook ads help us a lot, as well as YouTube. YouTube is a really big driver. Now with uh, Facebook ads, can you talk to us about that, that strategy? Like, How do you set up your, your campaigns? Yeah, so um, we actually look at our Shopify analytics before we work on the Facebook ads. So the analytics on Shopify let us know where our customers are mostly from, what city, what country. Uh, what the demographics are, the ages, if they're what platform they're shopping from, if they're on their mobile, if they're on the computer. So I take all that and I implement it into my Facebook ad. So um, we have 90% demographic, demographic of women. Um, most of them are in the U.S. We have some Canada. We have some United Kingdom customers. So um, I take all of that information and that's how I build my Facebook ad. Um, then I obviously get more more detailed, you know, I put customers that are, they follow manicure pages or um, they're more likely to be online shoppers. That's how we build our Facebook ads. But I feel like Facebook makes it very easy for an entrepreneur to build their ads. Mm. What does the, the ad look like? How, what are you, what is this, what is it showing? What is it saying on the ad itself to, to drive customers to your site? Uh, what I feel like works best are videos. So customers really like seeing how easy it is to use our nail products. So I will post a video. Um, you usually pay per view. So it'll be about a penny per view on Facebook. And uh, I feel like that works best. Customers watching videos. Yeah, what, what are their videos of? So it'll be uh, one of our customers applying um, our nail art powder or applying a nail stencil and removing it and showing her final manicure. So it'll literally be start to finish from bare nails to her end manicure. And are you helping them create this video? Like how? Because I think I, th- I thought it was impressive, right, that you're building this Instagram profile that's 99% uh, your customer's content, but now you're also using their content. You're able to, to get content from them to, to run these ads. Like how are you able to do that? No, we don't help our customer create their videos. They create them for their own page, and then we have their permission to use it on our pages. As long as you credit the user, it's um, completely legal to use their content. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it is. I, that's really cool. I'm just wondering when they are, are they, are these videos that you, that they're, they're putting out there, do you do any kind of editing to, to make it fit better for, for an ad? Because I can imagine, you know, someone that's applying nail polish, it might take, you know, I'm not sure how long it takes, but like, it takes more longer than an ad should be. What, what, how do you turn that con- their content into something that you can use in a Facebook ad? As long as the video is less than 30 seconds, uh, I don't change anything. It's usually perfect. And I also don't like changing another creator's content to fit mine. Mm-hmm. I don't want to disrupt their work. So, uh, so are no. these typically like influencers or? Just regular nail artists. Some of them with as little as 500 followers on Instagram and Sometimes that boost from our ads helps them build their page. So it's Got basically it. a win-win situation for the both of us. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. So you know how there's like different types of campaigns you can run in Facebook where you're just looking to drive traffic or you're maybe looking to, to uh, your, the goal is an actual conversion. Do you have that kind of, uh, I guess, complex setup on your, Insta- on your Facebook uh, ad campaigns? Yeah, we do. Uh, I keep an eye on it all. 
so far I've noticed that videos have the best conversion rate. And usually like there's like um, a link in like the description of the video or how are they clicking over from that video to, to your site and then ultimately buying? Yeah, there's always a link. There's also campaigns that you can set up so that people like your page on Facebook, but I don't think that's made an actual difference for us in sales. So I always just aim for the link in the actual ad. Got it. So when people are seeing seeing the video and they're clicking on the the video, or clicking on the link in the the description of the Facebook video, does it take them right to that particular product that that customer is using? Does it take them to the landing the home page? Or where is it driving the traffic? I always try to drive the traffic directly to the home page in hopes that a customer will see a different product that maybe they'll also like. Uh, I don't like mm-hmm. to specify this actual landing page of that product because what if they purchase that product and they don't have a look around your website? Got it. Makes sense. So the the um, in the pre-interview, you also mentioned that you are supplementing with your Instagram with YouTube. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you're using YouTube? Yeah, YouTube is a is a great um, driving force for visitors to the website. Uh, we have some YouTube girls that we work with that are um, amazing and they post our products and basically they're affiliates to our, with our website. So they will earn a commission for any sales that they drive to the website. So within their videos in their description boxes, they have their special affiliate link. So when a customer clicks that it takes them to our website and they'll earn a commission if they make any sales and there's, we have we have a quite a few affiliates and they're a great driving force. So we don't actually post our own content on YouTube. It's basically we rely on the influencers there. Mm-hmm. Can you say how many affiliates you're working with? That's a good question. Is it in the hundreds or? It, um, it's about less than a hundred. Yeah. I mean, we have really small ones that are just regular customers that post their links on their personal Facebook pages and hope that their friends purchase from their own personal links. As for big influencers, I'd say we have about 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those influencers on YouTube are, are great. They're, I see. So you have like a, almost like a referral program that any customer can participate in. And then also you have like a much larger accounts, like those 10 that, that you work with. What, uh, are you using a specific application or anything for the affiliate or referral program? How does someone sign up for it? Yeah, we use lead dyno on Shopify. It's, so, it's super easy to use. The, the affiliate just comes on and they sign up with their PayPal address. And every month we pay out affiliates directly to their PayPal. So they can manage it. They can see what purchases are coming in. So it's completely legitimate. Um, and it's open for them to just watch and keep track of their own analytics. Mm-hmm. I've heard of Lead Dino. I haven't used it before. Can you, or is there any kind of a customization or, or uh, tips for someone that is just signing up to use uh, an application like Lead Dino for the first time and how they can use it to improve their referral program? So we have a page on our website at the, Twitter that says our affiliates and you just click it and you see the link to sign up for your own lead dyno account. Um, it's fairly easy to use. Right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Um, I don't know about customization though. I don't think we've customized it too much <laughs> I think to be honest. Ours is pink and I think that's yeah. the most, that's the <laughs> most easy. Well, I guess you can play with things like uh, the uh, percentage that you pay out. Is that all public? Are you able to share what, what what's worked for you guys? Yeah, we customize how much um, affiliates will earn, and uh, you can actually change it for each affiliate. So if you only want one uh, one to earn this much and another one to earn a little bit more or less, you can do that also through Lead Dino. Yeah, we offer five percent for affiliates starting out. Got it. And once you are now, now when you're working with these much bigger accounts, uh, let's talk about them. Like, how did you find the the you know ten or so large uh, YouTube influencers? Um, I'll give you an example of one of them. She's amazing. We found her maybe three years ago. She was a much smaller account, and we you know just reached out. We asked her like, "Hey, would you like to try some stuff from our website?" And she said, "Sure, send it over." We sent it over and she's a complete doll. She's amazing to work with. And she liked us and we built like kind of a friendship with her. It's, you know, we would start just like texting and, you know, 
just chatting and she actually ended up going on to create a YouTube. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention she was on Instagram at the time. Mm -hmm. She went on to create a YouTube. Again, she really enjoyed our product. She liked us. We liked her. We would send her stuff. We gave her an, um, her own code to our website. Over the course of the last two to three years, she's grown to become one of the biggest influencers on YouTube uh, in, in general, like overall, not just in the nail community. And she, we still work with her. And because of the friendship that we built with her, you know, two, three years ago, when she was much smaller, like she's still promoting our products now. So, you know... That's yeah. just one story of one girl. Can you say can you say her, her name? Like, what's how large is her following today? Yeah, uh, her name is Christine. Simply Neological, and I think she has about five to six million subscribers yeah. at the moment. Five to six million. Wow. She's, it's constantly growing. She's, you know. So she started this YouTube channel when and how 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 long did it take her to grow to five to six million? Ooh. She started it a while ago, but she started showing her face and being her really active yeah. and herself and her personality and everything. Probably like a two and a half years ago, but I'm sorry. I don't know the exact uh, time frame. Yeah, no, that's just super impressive just to hear about. And you mentioned this also in the pre-interview questions, which was that the way that you find these influencers that you focus primarily on people that you think one day would be successful and much larger. And then you build a foundation of relationship with them first. So this is a great example that you just gave us of, of, of an example of that. And you focus on, they focus on finding smaller accounts. So what did you, what do you look for these days like to, to identify and uncover these, these gems? You know, honestly, we don't look at followers or anything like that. I look at content. I like to see, you know, really how they take their pictures. If, you know, what their videos are looking like, anything that the content looks good. And if we want to work with them, we reach out to them, whether they have 500 followers or 5,000, it doesn't matter. I don't care about the followers. I care about, you know, do I see this person making, getting bigger one day? And do we think that they'd be a good match with us? Yeah. Because we also want it to be a personal relationship. Right. We email our affiliates like they're our best friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, we really look out for people that we think yeah. um, are personal in their posts and are genuine. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a combination of a lot of different factors. It's not just about like, oh, are you going to make it big one day and take me with you? No, definitely not. It's just, it, it is building more of a friendship with these girls. Got it. So how do you work with them on an ongoing basis? Are you, are you asking them to produce or ask you're sending them products, new products that you're releasing, and then they'll eventually uh, shoot a YouTube video about it. Like how does that relationship work? You know, Lana and I are very, um, flexible. we're very <laughs> flexible. We know a lot of uh, companies that will send product out and say, Hey, I need a manicure done by this time, this date, whatever. Lana and I will just send it out, and honestly, half the time we'll forget. We, like, <laughs> we've always felt like yeah. uh, nail people that are painting their nails on, are on Instagram are creative, and most likely people that like to do things on their own time since they're doing manicures at home rather than at a salon. So we've always said we would hate if somebody put rules on us yeah. or made us sign a contract to produce this amount of content for you. So I send out it, the products send out a PR package and I send an email saying, Hey, I just sent this over. You don't have to post it if you don't want, but it's coming. And yeah, yeah often whatever, than not, whatever they, they choose to do with it, that's yeah. totally fine. But yeah, I, we've always approached it in a really chill way. Yeah. <laughs> More often than not, they're going to post on their own. I, I don't think I've ever once sent up a follow-up email like, Hey, where's my, this is, I mean, I've never done this. So it gives them freedom. It gives us more, you know, freedom and it's just, it's better to do it that way. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one of the interesting thing you mentioned was that every year since you started the business, the best selling product of the year has changed. Can you walk us through the best selling products each year? Yeah, I think the first year we started was the nail stencils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the next year was this, what it, this tool, it was a cleanup brush. Yeah. The and brushes. then the next year was 
um, nail polish, stamping polish. Yeah. And then this year so far, it's been powders. Yeah. It, so it really does change every year. Next year, it's going to be something completely different. And we have to keep up with the trends every year. And it's fun. It's a good time. Yeah. Well, what do, why do you think it changes so much for your business from one year to the next? A new popular product just seems to take off for you. With something as broad as nails, um, there are constantly new trends coming out. It's just, it's a complete, it's a really competitive field and it's new trends, new designs, new styles, and you just have to stay on top of it. It's just, it's constantly changing. And how do you do that? How do you make sure that you're not falling behind the, the curve? I feel like we keep up a lot with the yeah. explore page on Instagram, yeah. with uh, manicures on celebrities at uh, events, um, and even just going out in LA and looking at people's nails. And, you know, girls love posting their manicures. So when my friends are posting their manicures out of the salon and I see something that we don't carry, we instantly text each other and we're like, we need this. We need to carry this. Why don't we have this? I was going to say, when you do find out that there's a new product that's just on the cusp of taking off and you know that you have to get into your store, walk us through that process. How do you source it and how do you make sure you get into the store in time to catch on to the, the trend? We work with a few uh, very reputable suppliers and... Yeah, we have vendors at this yeah. point that we know release consistent yeah. quality products to us. But it does take some time for us to sample everything, and test everything. And we're really picky about what we carry. Mm -hmm. So I would say that in that case, with being so picky, maybe sometimes we're a couple weeks behind in releasing it on our website. But our customers always know that they're getting the top quality product on our website. They'll probably wait for it, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of we make from home. So if there's a new design, mm -hmm. uh, I, I design it on my computer and we... We make it ourselves. Yeah. Got it. What's the uh, testing and sampling uh, process like? What, what are you looking for? We, we only carry the top quality products. So I'll order, I'll give you an example of our, you know, our brushes. They were, Lana had mentioned they were one of our best sellers back then. Um, I ordered brushes from a bunch of different companies and I tested all of them on myself and I wanted to see how they would work. And I mean, in the end, we only carry the best one. And even if it means it costs us more, that's okay. Because we don't want our customers to receive anything but the best product. Got it. So you're basically just using it on yourself as a way to test, which makes sense. I mean, if you are the customer, you probably have a great feedback on on what you should want to and what you don't want to include in the store. So I think you mentioned earlier that it's just you two that run this business and it's uh, obviously a very fast growing business and it's growing over time. Can you give an idea of how quickly it's grown over the last, you know, three, four, I guess, four years now? We're consistently up year over year about 15%. Um, and that's for our followers. They're all built organic um, on Instagram. We've never paid for followers. So we've been able to build that from zero. Um, our Facebook is rapidly growing right now since we started with the Facebook ads too. Uh, I think we're about to reach 35,000 likes on Facebook. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's impressive. 15% year over year growth. And it's a, it's a, that's you know, impressive in any industry. What do you think is the key to each year that you've been able to keep on growing this number and not, and keep the company away from just, you know, stagnating at a certain revenue? We, um, going back to what we were talking about earlier, we make it a point to release new products about once a month. So it's just constantly releasing new products, staying on trends, really, that's that's the key to a lot of our success. If we don't release a product that month, a new one, we definitely notice a dip, you know? Yeah, so, we'll see it in our numbers, and then we'll, you know, be like, hey, we need to get on top of this, release now, something. Now, what's considered a good new product? Is it a, good new, a brand new product or a different, I guess, color for an existing product? How different are is each new product? It's a combination of both. So, for instance, uh, this month alone, we're going to be releasing three new new powders it's you know same thing as kind of what we're currently carrying just in different shades different colors and then also this month we're releasing a brand brand new product never been on our website before brand new line so yeah yeah i'm sure you have more ideas than you have time to release these products so how do you decide what you guys should focus on that's a good question. <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right about having more ideas than <laughs> we do. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's just paying attention to social media, seeing what people are using more. Mm -hmm. And if we see like, hey, I've been seeing this on a lot of accounts. A lot of girls are asking about this. That's another thing. We get a lot of uh, requests from customers themselves they'll email us or or message us and say hey when are you guys going to start creating so and so and then yeah our business is really uh i think it's community driven so for example with the new instagram polls feature um last week for example liz and i wanted to release a rose gold powder we thought rose gold was super trendy we thought it would do amazing so on our instagram i posted Um, three different powders. And I said, would you rather have rose gold or this powder? And then I said, would you rather have rose gold or that powder? And nobody wanted, (laughs) it wasn't nobody, but about 70 people, 70% of people voted against the rose gold. Are you using the Instagram like stories polls to do this? The polls on our story. We were shocked. Yeah. And we said, whoa, maybe this isn't something that people want. And our community helped us make that decision. So um, even Two days ago, for example, I posted a picture of our new nail polish line coming out and I asked customers to help us name them. And our customers gave us, we have wide range. We had over 400 comments right now. 300 comments within the first hour of customers providing us with ideas for names. Wow. So this is a, this is a part of your process now to always go to Instagram and ask them to help you decide which product to release or what to name it. Is that part of the release process these days? Yeah, I feel like it's always been part of the process. But lately with the Instagram story polls, it's been uh, easier. But I feel like it's really important for companies to engage with their customers and let the customer feel like they are a part of this company. Like, And it's more fun. Too. It's more fun for us, too. I and feel for like them. The and- customer gets excited thinking like, oh, this product's coming out. I can await this. Now I know this is coming soon. And, and yeah, they get to be creative, too. They get to think of their own their own names and they help us so much i mean it's just us too so i think eventually we lose sight of what's a cute name and what's not because we're doing it all day every day so when we have new voices come in and give us ideas it's awesome on that note if you go to our website you'll see under the nail stencil section that we have quite a few there that we have in the upper corner that says created with so and so um so those vinyls were actually created by these Instagram nail artists. Yeah, they send us in their ideas and then sometimes we'll name the nail central after them or credit them in the product list. That's awesome. Now, because the industry and the trends change so quickly, how do you make sure that you're not holding on to a bunch of inventory that's no longer going to sell? How do you make sure that, that, that you don't end up in that situation? We've been pretty fortunate so far where we haven't held on to products for too long. We we do a pretty good job of, from the very beginning, kind of knowing what's going to sell and what won't. And if we ever really do come across that issue, we'll just, you know, I guess we just put it on sale. Yeah, but <laughs> but we have been very fortunate that we haven't really had that problem. Because And I think it's because Lana and I are so picky in what we release. Um, it's so well thought out that because of that, we, we don't have this issue very often. Got it. So tell, tell us about what your day to day is like when you both step into to work in the morning. How do you spend your day? Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So uh, <laughs> we actually just signed our lease on an office space yesterday. Nice. So we're so excited for that. But actually, the both of us work from our own home. Um, so we both have right now. Yeah, yeah. We have our routine. We drink our coffee and we head straight <laughs> upstairs. Like, um, and we get strict to work. So basically, um, day to day, uh, I answer every single email, yeah. like every single email. Uh, it's just, so I start my day off with answering emails and Lana is more the creative one. So any sort of like creative, anything on the website, she's constantly updating that. Um, I answer emails and then every day, honestly, every single day we pack orders yeah. every day, seven days a week. We never stop packing orders. Yeah, packing so shipping. that's our day to day. Today. And then every now and then, obviously, we're testing new products. So, but that, you know, it could be twice a week, it could be twice a month. It really just depends on yeah. what's on trend to that <laughs> at that time. Got it. Yes, yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about the, the website. And is this, is this all done in house? Did you guys hire someone to help you build out the, the Shopify store? Oh, no. Shopify made it so easy for me, Felix. <laughs> um, I completely made the website on my own. 
Um, I the only help I have ever had was with some SEO uh, analytics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, no, I built the website completely on my own. We just bought a theme from the Shopify store. Do you remember the name of the theme? The theme? Um, I think it's uh, Testament. Got it. Now, what about the applications? What kind of other apps do you use on on the the site? So I know you mentioned Lead Dino. Any other apps that you use to to help power the website and the business? This is gonna sound uh, really silly, but, but one of my favorite applications is called Yo Recent Sales Notifications. And basically, when you get on the website, there's a small window that pops up in the bottom left hand corner, like every twenty seconds or so, and it would say like. Lana from Los Angeles just purchased, uh, um, you know, Sounds your glamour map. Yeah. And so I really like this feature because I feel like if a customer is focused on one page and then they see that little pop up, they say, oh, what's that? And then they'll click it and then it'll take them to the other link um, to the other page with that product in it. And I feel like it just <laughs> kind of gives you more. I don't know. It gives Lisa loves it. She I love it. <laughs> I have you seen, it. Has, it, has it played out in terms of actually driving more conversions? I, it doesn't have the analytics. It's actually a free app for anybody that yeah. wants it. Um, but I like it in the sense that I feel like it's showing customers new products that they otherwise wouldn't have looked at. And it's also showing customers that it's a legitimate website that other people are purchasing from. You know, I'll um, be honest. I saw it on a different website and I really, really liked it. And I, and I actually did <laughs> click the little window and that's when I went to Lana and I said, Lana, you need to put this on our website. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it, it generates some kind of like there's activity going on on a website. It doesn't feel like you're just here by yourself. And I think yeah. that, that does make a difference in terms of uh, social proof. Like, Hey, there's other people that trust this website. There are people that are buying from this website. I can trust them too. So I think that there's certainly value in that. Anything else that you you guys you guys like using on the website? Yeah, we also use S Loyalty. Um, it's basically a rewards program where whenever customers spend one dollar, they receive two points, and the app gives you the capability of setting up um, whatever deal that you want. So if if the customer reaches a hundred points, they get a free sheet of this, or if they uh, reach a different tier of points, they receive a bigger free item. So. They're really flexible with that. I really like S loyalty. It's just a little pop up at the bottom of your website that the customer can click and it tracks all their orders. It tracks their account. So it's all set up for you. We also use uh, the product reviews app. Yeah. The free Shopify product reviews app comes in a lot of handy. I feel like that also provides a ton of legitimacy and customers can submit their own manicures. They can submit pictures on the product reviews page. So that helps other customers see like, oh, the snail stencil actually does have this effect and this holographic powder actually does have this effect on this customer. So, yeah. yeah. Well, no, what's that one app that you use where if you, when we have the promotion and it says like buy two, get one free, and then it automatically adds it to the cart? I think it's by Supple and it's called buy one, get one. It's about $15 a month. Um, but it comes in handy because the Shopify coupons section, the discount section, doesn't really offer that many options. You know what I'm talking about, Felix? Have you ever used it? Yeah, yeah. So the buy one, get one, what does it offer? So it offers so many more things. So if you buy X, it'll add Y to your cart. Or So if you ever have a promotion that says, hey, buy this glitter, get this second glitter for free, with the current Shopify setup, we, the sellers, would have to manually go in and say, oh my gosh, okay, this person qualifies for free glitter. But with this app, it you just put in the promotion and it automatically adds it into every cart that qualifies for it. Got it. So it's yeah. like a bonus gift that comes with a, a purchase they made. How do you decide what that gift should be? You know, it just, whatever we, I don't know. That's a good question. You know, on <laughs> Shopify, on the homepage, it tells you uh, people that are likely to buy blah, 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 are likely to buy blah, blah, blah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So we offer those as bundles. So if, if we see that Shopify is recommending this person buys this with that, then we offer that as the free gift. Yeah. And oh, I like that. Sometimes random yeah. on our own whim, but yeah. Shopify analytics does help a lot with Yeah. And that. it's changed so much over the years and it's been 
incredible. Awesome. So thank you so much, Lisa and Lana. So Twinkle T, T-W-I-N-K-L-E-D-T.com is a website. So you mentioned that you signed a new lease uh, on an office. Uh, what do you want to focus the attention on next? Like, what do you want to see the business grow to next? Now that we're going to have more room, <laughs> we're like, yay, we could fill it up with more products. So uh, we're looking to expand our products. We also have a room in the office that we want to dedicate to creating our own YouTube content from here on out. Um, we feel like that would be so helpful to our business. And hopefully we can hire maybe one employee to start helping us out and growing. And yeah, it's kind of awkward right now if we were to hire an employee to come to our home. <laughs> So um, hopefully with the office, then that'll mean some more help. Very cool. Thank you so much for your time again. Thank you. Thank you, Felix. Thanks we so appreciate much, Felix. it. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Shopify Masters, the e-commerce podcast for ambitious entrepreneurs powered by Shopify. To get your exclusive 30-day extended trial, visit shopify.com slash masters.